Hello everybody, welcome back after a slight hiatus <laughs> to this uh, second part of uh, the tutorial series about flying retro style AVA spacecraft. And um, today we'll look at the DISCI, which uh, stands for Display Keyboard, Display Unit for the Apollo Guidance Computer, which can be found uh, obviously in the Apollo, Apollo Command Module and also the, the LEM. So in real life, this was used to have uh, a display, so informations, but was also used as uh, inputs uh, by the astronauts to give commands um, to the AGC. Uh, and uh, by the way, I did put some um, nice video links about the AGC and the DISCI in the video description. If you are interested to learn more about it, it's a glorious piece of engineering. It's absolutely outstanding for that uh, for that um, period of time, what they did. And I especially, especially recommend watching the, um, uh, there's a conference given by astronaut David Scott, Apollo astronaut David Scott, uh, about the design process and also cool stories about his experience flying this machine. So let's get back to KSP. Uh, in KSP, obviously, all this this thing is simplified and is only used as a display. This will give you all the buttons here, everything, all what you can find in the map view. Definitely less that you can have with a Kerbal Engineer, but uh, enough to get the job done. <laughs> So what we have here, we have some flags, we have some uh, lines with numbers, and uh, here three rows of buttons. First row is the source, so that means where the computer is getting the data from. So first one is orbit, uh, it will give us our orbital parameters. So we see that we are in a roughly 20 kilometers orbit. Um, so apoapsis, periapsis, inclination. Uh, here is the time uh, timeline time uh, I mean time um, row if you will um, this brings me to the second row of buttons here timer which will change this line according to what you want to see so right now here time to apoapsis one hour from 39 minutes time to periapsis ascending node ascending node time to maneuver if you have a maneuver plotted and time to launch, but I believe this is not implemented. Implemented. I'd have to double check that. Okay, roll up. Uh, yeah, maneuver. So if I switch to maneuver here, obviously we don't have a maneuver plotted yet, but let me just change that. So just put a random maneuver right here. And magic. We can see we have a maneuver of 79 meters per second, which is correct. And uh, what it tells us here is the resulting orbital parameters uh, from this maneuver. So you see that uh, the apoapsis is going to change, the inclination, inclination is going to change. You can compare that to the current maneuver, uh, to, to the current orbit, sorry. We can see our time to maneuver is three minutes. And that maneuver here, if I click this, is going to cost 79 meters per second. Um, yeah, I didn't talk about this yet. So this is the uh, delta V row um, total, which is our total delta V available, stage delta V, which is the same for us, maneuver and transfer. If we happen to have a transfer, not sure if this is implemented as well. Uh, some of you guys know, tell me. Something I wish in my dreams is that there would be a version of this when you have a numerical input, like in Apollo, and that you can plot maneuvers from inside the cockpit. That would be really, really, really nice. So I didn't talk about the rendezvous and target buttons. Uh, we're going to get into that because we are going to take this, occasions, uh, this occasion to do a short rendezvous tutorial. Uh, before that, I'm just going to talk about the flags. Those are just uh, reading flags uh, for your current situation. Orbit, we are in orbit. Circular, when your eccentricity is low enough to call it circular, so near zero, basically. Escape, if your current trajectory is escaping the sphere of influence of the body you are orbiting. Reentry, if you're on reentry. Atmosphere braking, obvious. Landing, if you're on a suborbital tra trajectory for landing. Rendezvous radar, target track, that means you have an active target selected. 
approach means you're closing from your target, departure to go going away from, from your target, maneuver, you have a maneuver plotted, uh, we saw that. Uh, attitude error, I believe. Yeah, uh, for instance, if you are in maneuver mode, you have a target vector, uh, a maneuver vector. If you are deviating from that, uh, this is this will this flag will go insane. So rendezvous. Uh, we are on the moon, 20 kilometers orbit. We've got eagle right here, which is at the uh, higher orbit. Just showing you on the map view. I'm gonna target it and get back in the cockpit. If I press now the target screen, it's updated with our target info. We can see its apoapsis, periapsis, so it's higher orbit, and also relative inclination, two degrees, and our inclination is zero relative to the moon. Three steps. First one, matching inclination. Second step, Hohmann transfer. Third step, breaking burn uh, at closest approach. So for the first step, for that we need to do a normal burn at either ascending node or descending node. Be sure to put you in target mode and click on ascending node or descending node. If you do this from orbit mode, your ascending node will not be the same because here in target mode it's ascending node relative to the target, uh, which means those guys, right? Uh, if you do this in orbit mode, it's not gonna work, obviously. So target, and we're just gonna pick the closest one. So this one is one hour, this one 33 minutes. So it's a descending node, we know our relative inclination is two degrees. That means we need to burn uh, normal, normal plus. So we switch to normal. Uh, by the way, if you don't know how to use this, I did a part one of the tutorial series cover that. So you can watch it if you're not familiar with it. Okay, so 30 minutes, let's time warp. Less than three minutes, I'm gonna change my attitude. Okay, attitude is correct. Let's time warp. Five seconds, I'm gonna use the SPS to do this. It's gonna be a short, bo short burn. Short burn. Ugh. Inclination decreasing. Okay, fine tune this with RCSs. Ah, come on. Oh, okay, close enough. So part one is done. Now for part two, we need to do a home and transfer burn. Now that our inclination is correct. So for that, we're not going to use this. We're going to use this phase ejection angle indicator. What you want to do is very simple. Wait until those two needles reaches zero. And when they reach zero, that means it's your time to burn uh, for the Hohmann transfer. So as we are in a lower orbit uh, than our target, obviously we're gonna burn prograde to raise our orbit to catch up. Oh crap. I forgot to turn on the fuel cells again. Da, all the time. So let me do some magic. Two. Okay, sorry guys. You can breathe again, fuel cells. <laughs> okay. Okay, almost there. So we need to point prograde. So it's gonna be orbital plus. Okay, good enough. So now, new screen. We were in target mode, which was the orbital parameter. And now let's go to rendezvous mode. What we have here, top row minimum distance. So that's closest approach, which is fairly high now, which is normal. Approach speed. We don't care right now. Relative inclination, we know that. Approach time, time until closest approach. Uh, and delta V, that doesn't change. Uh, so when we this reaches zero, we'll burn prograde in our case and watch this. And when this reaches zero, we'll stop the burn. You can double create, double check this data with uh, the orbit. We know that our target apoapsis is at uh, roughly 70 kilometers. We are 20 kilometers orbit. Uh, that means it's gonna be a really short burn. I guess like one or two seconds on the SPS. Um, so yeah, you can just double check the, the data here if you need to. And uh, here we go. Okay, so we did, it's not bad. 
So closest we can get is 400 meters. That's because of our inclination difference. I believe we can work this with RCSs. Yep, 100 meters. That's okay. 70, 50, 40, 30. Good enough. Okay. Uh, that's, so that's part two done. Hormone transfer done. The uh, last phase remaining is the breaking burn. So we have approach time right here. 44 minutes. Six minutes. Okay. This brings me to a new instrument. We didn't use that yet in this uh, series, which is the this one. You can see ART. Yeah, this uh, stands for Altitude Range Range Rate Indicator. Awful. So ART, really. <laughs> uh, two modes. One for altitude, alt altimeter plus um, altitude rate display. Second one is for range. So, range. so that's for target. And you can see it switches here. We can see we are still uh, more than five kilometers away, closing at uh, 17 meters per second. And if we look over here, approach speed 17 meters per second. So that's convenient. We have two displays for that. Last thing we need to do is put ourselves to relative velocity and minus retrograde because we want to cancel that velocity, which is the same as putting you in target mode here in the navball and selecting retrograde. So let me align to this vector. Okay, and we see now the range is decreasing. Still four minutes, so we're gonna time warp again. 20 seconds, last minute fine tuning. That's gonna be a really small burn, which I'm gonna do on the SPS. So I, I guess it would take much too much time on the RCS. I'm lazy. Three, two, one. Okay. So good enough. Approach speed zero. No, not quite. <laughs> I'm just fine tune this with RCS. You can see I'm bringing the needles in the center by translation. And now just push forward or backward and there we go 23 meters from our target and there we are uh, last thing i could mention they could be there could be a fourth step if you somehow don't manage to get a good closest approach like or if you say it's a big big station you want to go uh, like uh, uh, farther from that uh, there, there would be a fourth step, which would be getting closer to the target. So in that case, you would need to switch to target mode and plus, which would mean target, in, you would select that. That would basically point you towards the target and all you have to do is burn towards it and then cancel out again that velocity. Uh, okay, so I think that's, um, that's it for this uh, episode. Uh, it can be a bit intimid intimidating at first, but um, that's really not complicated to use. And um, yeah, uh, doing a rendezvous from IVA with this little screen is always a rewarding and cool experience. Uh, next episode, we'll cover the docking. So uh, that's going to introduce us to the X pointer, which is really cool instruments, which allows to do very smooth and precise dockings. Okay. so. Thanks everybody for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to do so. And I'll see you in the next one. See you.